Hey folks. Okay, here's one for you. How many of you remember Crazy Nick's Picks? I'm guessing not many of you. Uh, so for those of you who don't know what that is, Crazy Nick's Picks is a set of five different releases from Sierra, which mostly are um, the mini games from Sierra Adventures. So, you know, if you if you played a lot of Sierra Adventures, you might have noticed they had little sort of arcade sequences, mini games, things like that built into them. Um, and somebody had the great idea, hey, why not uh, release those separately and make a, a game collection out of the mini games from Sierra Adventures for people who don't like adventure games but want to play the other types of games that were embedded in them. Uh, I don't know how successful these are. I don't think they were tremendously commercially successful. I never saw them sold anywhere. Um, I don't know how much they sold for. I think probably they sold for maybe just like a few bucks each, like five bucks per package or something like that, which is not a lot, but <laughs> there, really there, there really wasn't much there. Let's go ahead and take a look at what we have. I'm going to try and review uh, all five of the Crazy Nick's Picks releases today. I guess I'll start with uh, Crazy Nick's Picks, uh, the, the Robin Hood release, just because this is probably the, the least impressive of the group, just to kind of get an idea of what we're getting into. So if we run this, we get the usual Sierra logo with the usual Sierra fanfare. Yeah, so you can right away see it's based on Conquests of the Longbow. I mean, it's basically, well, it is. It's it's the games from Conquest of the Longbow. So we say, if we just do a quick about here, you can actually get, like, information on the, uh, on the games. So this is obviously useful to give you an idea of how to play them. Uh... They give you quite a lot of information on, on different games. So yeah, oh yeah, and Nine Men's More is this game, which I still don't know how to play. I never figured out how to play this game, and I still don't know, so I'm gonna be terrible at playing this game, but uh, yeah, I'll play this just uh, just for completeness sake. But those of you who saw uh, my Let's Play of Conquest of the Longbow, remember that I have no idea how to play Nine Men's More, and I still don't. And Sticks, there's even... Uh, <laughs> This is literally just like a tiny little um, fighting game that was built into Conquest of the Longbow, and they thought, "Hey, let's make a, let's just toss it into release because we don't have much else to, uh, don't have much else to feature." So, um, all right. So, um, credits. I'm just going. I'm just going through all these screens just so people can see what's there because there's there might be some interesting background information there, and yeah, this is just one of the five Nick's Picks budget games available. Yeah, they don't have prices or anything on this here, but and of course they're advertising the full the full game Conquest of the Longbow in case somebody wants to uh, play the is inspired to play the full game based on this. So okay, let's go play the game. So we'll start with archery. And yeah, so you might remember this from Conquest of the Longbow. I mean, it's 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 literally just the archery sequence from that. So you just click and you, oh, that was a lucky bullseye right in the middle of the, the wreath there. So you click on your hand to reload. And if the wind is blowing, you kind of have to compensate for that. But it's, it's difficult to compensate for it because the wind just starts and stops very suddenly. So like, see, now it's suddenly blowing to the right. If I had shot just before, yeah, okay, now it's calm. So let's see if I can get a shot in before it starts blowing again. Can I? There we go. Not too bad. It was a little, not quite as much of a dead center bullseye as the first shot, but still not too bad. All right, I need to, I need to aim to the, oh, no. I was going to aim to the right because the wind was blowing to the left, but then it stopped. So, oh, now it is, okay, let's try this. Oop, I overcompensated by quite a bit, actually. Okay. All right, let's keep going. There we go. That looked better. Yeah, that was pretty good. A little, a little above, a little too high, but that's, That'll that'll play. Uh, also, looks pretty good. Um, here I need to aim to the left. I don't even see my arrows, so I'm assuming that it. Oh, collect my arrows before I fire again. And then. Okay, he didn't actually collect. Oh, there we go. Now he collected his arrows, and that's it. That's the game. Like that's that's the whole game. Oh, I guess you can practice with these. Um, yeah, you can practice with those wreaths back there if you want additional challenge, if you want to see. Obviously, it's harder because you have to compensate more for the arrow drop caused by gravity. But, I mean, that's that's basically it. That's that's the game. So, uh, yeah. 
you can see it's uh, let's see if I just click yeah you click on the walk icon to uh, to leave so you can see they've literally just taken the the it's it's still the SCI engine like it's still the same engine that the game was built on they they haven't really done anything other than just they've taken out the all the adventure parts of the game and they've just left uh the you know these portions these sort of mini game portions but it is still based on the SCI engine which powered the original adventure games so it's uh I'll collect what I fired before I leave. All right, so yeah, so that was that. Games of skill and chance. All right, so that was archery. Uh, let's see. So now we go back to Nine Men's Morris. Can I look around here? Oh, I can't. I can't look at things because I remember. Oh, you can. You can actually. You can. You can still try to pet the cats. You can actually interact with the scene here. That's kind of cute. Okay, but obviously we're here. We're here to play Nine Men's Morris. So how do we play? Do I? Come on. How do I? Oh, I see. Okay. Uh, I do. Oh, I click where I want to put my pieces. All right. All right. Here we go. Let's do this. That's right. Oh, yeah. We're playing nine men's moors like professionals. I have no idea what I'm doing, but I must be winning because I'm putting so many pieces on the board. Surely if I'm putting all this stuff on the board, that means I win, right? Oh, is the game over? Because I put all my pieces on the board? Oh, I can... Uh, that piece started flashing. Does that mean it's going to blow up? Or... Oh, here we go. I click on a different piece. Oh, we can slide them around. Okay, that's what I was trying to do, but it didn't seem to want to let me deselect that piece. All right, let's slide things around. Lots of sliding going on. There's a lot of sliding in Nine Men's Morris, all those nine men sliding against each other. You need lots of uh, proper lubrication is essential. Come on, why can't I move this piece now? Why doesn't it let me move the... Come on, there we go. Oh, he had to think about that one for a while. He was like, hmm, I, I was not expecting that. I must, I must have made a good move because he was really stumped by that one. Come on, come on, select that piece and there we go. I don't know what's happening. I'm not sure that I'm winning. I think I might not be, actually, because I seem to be losing my pieces. Perhaps that would be better suited for grubbing out the stable. Yeah, all right, all right. You can take that sass of yours and put it in your nine men, sir. All right. All right, that was nine men's more. So, yeah, we can leave the game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, and then we have sticks. Do you like to play with your sticks? Oh, here we get a... Difficulty level selection. I'll play on easy because I'm uh, my, I'm not very hard with my sticks. All right. Oh, oh, oh. Click. There we go. Click. Click like crazy. Click on the guy and beat him with your stick. Yes. Pound that man with your stick, Robin Hood. Yes, I am the victor. I don't know what I did, but I... He fought well. But not well at... Oh, oh this is Little John. I forget what voice I did for Little John. This was like so so long ago that I did. I, it was like ten years ago that I did the Let's Play. So I forget what voices I used for these people. But not well enough. Your final blow was so strong it broke his staff. Oh, I broke his staff with my, well. We see who has the stronger staff now, don't we? Yes, we see who has the harder staff. He he didn't. He was a. He, he was a man with a. Okay. All right. Aye, that was bad luck. Off toward the cave, man. Yes, I, I broke his staff in half, and he says, well, that was just bad luck. You know, it just kind of happened by accident. I wasn't really intending it. Okay, that... <laughs> and they just leave him sitting there. <laughs> they just leave... <laughs> Is he dead or... Okay. I, 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 I'm not sure if he's dead or if he's just unconscious, but either way, they just... They just leave him lying there in the middle of the road, dead or unconscious, seems a bit... Okay, anyway, that was Sticks. So there you go. That was Robin Hood's Games of Skill and Chance. Uh, all right, I want to move on because, again, we have five different Crazy Nick's picks to go through, so we want to kind of get through them. So that, as you can see, that was just taken from an existing Sierra game. So that was just totally, uh, like, low effort. Just They literally just took the mini games from Conquest of the Longbow and made a separate little program out of that. But a couple of these Crazy Nicks picks were actually original um, things like this. So I'm going to do now, now King Graham's one. And this is not based on any game from King, any game from King's Quest. This is actually something original. So yeah, Sierra logo. 
So, this is King Graham's Board Game Challenge. And yeah, we have Backgammon and Checkers. And yeah, there's really nothing special about these. It, it literally is just Backgammon and Checkers with King Graham. So, I mean, yeah, you can get in instructions and see... Yeah, okay, so you have a control bar up here. So this is a little bit more like, uh, like a usual SCI... Um, Point and clicking because you have you know you have an icon bar up here you can get information about stuff you can look at the people who made the game also I think this is the wrong music this is this is actually jazzy kind of music which is not at all well suited to the medieval setting of King's Quest I think this is actually the music that will here in another one of these crazy Nick's picks. I think they mistakenly put this music in the King Graham's board game challenge as well. Anyway, okay, so, uh, so yeah, what... Oh, I see, that just takes me back here. Okay, so, uh, let's see, what options do we have? Oh, options are in the games, okay. You must be in a game to read rules. All right, can I get... You must be in a game to show the score. Okay, this is just telling you what the different icon... Okay, all right, let's go ahead and... Let's see, can I, uh... All right, this is just, uh... Good King Graham is not only a good king, he's a darn good game opponent. Imagine what fun an entire collection of parlor games would be for you and your family. Yeah, so, um, some of you might remember, uh, I actually did a video with her crabbiness some years ago about uh, Hoyle Book of Games, uh, which was also released by Sierra, and that was a lot, of, a lot more full-featured. That had several more games which you could play against uh, King Graham and I think a couple of other Sierra uh, adventure game characters. But this is kind of like a cut-down version of that. This is basically, it's just King Graham, and it's just two games. It's just checkers and backgammon, and, and it's yeah, that's all there is to it. It's kind of like always. Oh, I think we saw this already. Uh, so it's just kind of like yeah, that's that's literally all it is. So let's go ahead and oh yeah, and sometimes these are weird. Like if you click on the buttons, it doesn't actually. Oh, there we go. Oh yeah, you have to click with the middle. So the mouse cursor is kind of off. You don't click with the tip of the mouse cursor. You click with the middle of the mouse cursor. They they didn't even bother to make the active portion of the mouse cursor the, the pointy tip of it, but rather the middle of it. So, okay. Difficulty level is beginner. Okay, name is, yeah, sure, player one, why not? Um, since your role was higher, you should take the first play. All right, thanks, Graham. You are an honorable king. I, th I think he made a face. Like, he makes he makes sort of grimaces or smiles based on how the game is going. So if he's doing well, he'll grin, and if, if, the game, if, if he's losing the game, he'll start to make sort of sour puss faces. Um, I have to confess, I don't n remember how to play backgammon. It's been literally like, uh, about 30 years since I've last played backgammon. So I do not remember. I mean, obviously you have these stones and you have to move the stones around and you have the dice that you really can't roll the dice just yet. Sure I can, Graham. I can roll the dice anytime. I mean, you, you, you can't tell me what to do. Read the Magna Carta, sir. It limits your, uh, your prerogative as a king. Uh, let's see. Oh, that's, that's, I, I wasn't even sure what color I am. Okay, so I'm brown and Graham is gray. So can I grab my stones and slide? I don't believe you can make that play at this time. Well, what can I do then, sir? Uh, can I? Oh, I see. Okay, so I get, okay, so the three is mine. And is that two mine as well? Oh, I can, okay. All right, he did something. I don't know what. All right, there we go. I rolled the dice, and I have a five and a five. So I guess that means I can move one piece five positions and another piece five positions. Yes, I can. Oh. Can I move another? Oh. Hmm. Maybe because I rolled double, do I get, like, double the moves? I'm not sure. I don't, I don't know how it works. What happened? Did he capture my pieces? I guess he did. I guess that means I'm going back to the gammon. All right. Uh, oh, boy. A Oh, I won't be able to move until I've got that man off the bar. Yes, uh, yes, when you've got a guy at the bar, it's important to help him get off because... Uh, all right, can I get my man? The rules do not allow for the play you seem to be trying. I, I have no idea what the rules are. Can I read the rules? Okay, let's let's read the rules here. Uh, all right, I'm. this is TLDR. This is TLDR. This is TLDR. Uh, all of this is TLDR which means too long didn't read for those of you who have never used the internet. I have no I have no idea what any of this says and you know what I'm I'm not 
I, I'm just going to be very honest. I'm not going to read this now. I'm not going to read that, so I still have no idea what's going on. What's the score? Oh, look at this. We have a scorecard. Player one versus Graham. And it starts playing score music. When you, when you pull the score, it starts playing music. That's pretty awesome. All right. Uh, options. Oh, doubling. Do we want to double? I have no idea. I don't know what doubling is. All right. Um... All right. I need to get my man off the bar, but I don't know how to get him off the bar. How do I get my man off the bar, Graham? Help me. The play you're attempting is invalid. Yeah, all right, come on. Suck it, Trebek. Okay, I have no idea what I'm doing, so I'll, I'll just... It's it's backgammon. It's it's backgammon with King Graham. I'll, I'll just go ahead and go back to the games and choose the other ones. So let's play... Checkers. I at least know how to play checkers. I mean, it's a pretty simple game. Uh, I'm not good at it. The first move is yours. Oh, thank you, Graham. Very gentlemanly of you. All right, so let's make a move. And he makes a move, and we make a move, and he... Oh, he took my piece already. Ah, but I can take his piece now. It's gone. He makes a move. I make a move. He makes a move. Uh, let's see. I make a move. He makes a move. Ah, I block him so he can't take my piece. Okay, now he's stuck there, I guess. Uh, what do we do now? Let's move. And he did that. I don't know who, if somebody is winning. Let's see. What are the rules of checkers? Just in case, uh, just in case someone doesn't know how to play checkers. Um, ba -dum, ba -dum, ba -dum, ba -dum. Yeah, when a pawn advances to the back row, that pawn becomes a king. Okay. Da, 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 da. Okay. All right. All right. All right. Seems pretty straightforward. All right. So let's just keep moving those checkers, man. Let's just move the. Just keep moving them checkers. Checking, checking, checking. Keep them checkers checking. All right, uh, let's see. I don't know if this is how you check. Oh, even though I didn't win, I enjoyed the game tremendously. Uh, what happened? Did we... Oh, did I win? Okay, that's interesting. I was not expecting to win. I don't know how I won. Okay, now we switch sides. Now Graham is black and I am red, so let's go ahead and try this again. So... Let's do the let's do the checkers again. That's right. Let's let's wave your checkers in the air like you just don't care. Whoops. Oh, I didn't see that. Now I'm a king. <laughs> sometimes he just says, "I'm a king." In this case, he said, "Now I'm a king." But sometimes he just says, "I'm a king," and he's so smug about it because you know, obviously, well, the joke is obvious, I guess, because he is King Graham, and now he's a king in checkers as well. Um. Oh yeah, and kings can jump backwards as well. Oh, see that smug little grin that he makes? Like, ah, I'm I'm winning the game. Ha ha ha! Lol, I just took two of your pieces. Yeah, he's yeah, he's such a, a smug, grinny little little king. All right, how do I? I don't think I'm going to win this one. I don't know. I have no idea how I won the first game. Honestly, that was a surprise to me. I was not uh, not expecting that in any shape or form. All right, can I? Uh, let's see. I mean, I'd like to. Uh, hmm. I'd like to get a king as well, but obviously if I if I uh, do this, he's just going to jump over me. So how do I prevent him from slaughtering me? I don't know. Oh, he jumped over me anyway. Well, that was that was anticlimactic. Uh, oh, you must make a jump if one is possible. Well, all right, then let's sure let's make a jump since one is possible. All right, and then he jumps anyway. So what was the Oh, checkers is a lot like life. It just goes back and forth and nothing ever really happens. There's no notion of progress or anything. I don't know. Um, I think I'm kind of stuck now because anything that I could do will result in him jumping. Like, I mean, I can... If I do that, he's going to jump over that. And if I do this, he's going to jump over that. And if I do, do this, if I do this, he's going to jump over that. So, all right, whatever. I think I'm pretty well... I think I'm pretty well screwed. I think I lost the game. Oh yeah, he's gonna turn that into a king now. I'm a king. Ha 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 ha. Yes. Can I not? 
Yeah, okay. All right. I won this game, but you'll surely win the next. All right, so I just won the first game by just pure beginner's luck. I have no idea how that happened, but uh, but yeah, then obviously I, I lost the second game very badly. Uh, so yeah, it's it's checkers. I mean, you know, it's not much to say about it. It's uh, it's just it, it literally again. It's it's literally just backgammon and checkers with Graham, and you know, there's not much to it. Like I mean, other than just the novelty value of having Graham up there grinning at you and making a few remarks now and then when. Uh, when stuff happens. So yeah, that was King Graham's uh, board game extravaganza. All right, moving on. Uh, so what's next? Let's do let's do Laura Bow. So I mentioned, yeah, that jazzy music, that's like something befitting, uh, you know, that sort of roaring 20s setting that the Laura Bow games are set in. And indeed, yeah. This is this is where we should have been hearing that music. Yeah, so it's uh, it's parlor games with with Laura Bow, and these also. Uh, so the last one with King Graham, those were not based on anything from King's Quest. Those were originally made for this uh, crazy Nick Software Picks collection, and the same is true here. I don't think the the Laura Bow games had any kind of mini games like that. So they made uh, they made up two mini games. Uh, for, for this collection as well. So the first one is called Yacht, which is, uh, it's Yahtzee actually, but I think Yahtzee is a trademarked name, so um, I guess they couldn't use, a, you know, a trademark, or they didn't want to buy the rights to use the trademark here, so they just called it Yacht, but it's basically that. So it's, uh, it's, it's Yacht and Domino's is, you know, Domino's obviously. So we can look at the instructions. Um, yeah, there's the control bar up there. Can I get information on the games? Okay, so this is help on Yacht. This is, okay, so this is instructions on how to play Yacht. And this is instructions on how to play Dominoes. All right, very nice. Okay, information on Sierra. Yeah, this is again advertising the, uh, the two Laura Bow games. Credits for this. All right, all right. Uh, I guess we can play. So again, I think in this game you have to click with the middle of the cursor. Oh, oh this time it. Okay, it's interesting. This time it took the. the okay, anyway. All right, let's play at the beginner level because I'm not good at. Oh yeah, I, I put my name as Pooh Slice here, uh, which is the name that I tend to use in a lot of games because of you know Syndicate Wars. So if you've never played Yahtzee, um, I'll try to explain. I mean, it's, it's basically like poker. Like you can see, you basically have the same sort of concepts that you have in video poker, like a full house and a straight and, and things like that, except it's with dice instead of cards, obviously. So if I roll the dice, so now I have the decision. Uh, I have three fours, so I can say I wanna, let's, let's do fours, why not? Let's say I wanna do fours. So you get three rolls. Also, you can kind of see Notice it looks like the game is kind of pushed down a little bit. I think they um, they didn't originally intend for that black bar to be up there, but then they kind of put it there, and then that resulted in everything kind of getting pushed down a bit. That might also be why you have to kind of click with the center of the mouse sometimes instead of the, the tip of the mouse pointer. I don't know. But yeah, you can see like the, the bottom of this text here is kind of shoved off the bottom of the screen. So it, it looks a little sloppy. Like, again, these these crazy Nyx picks, they're, they're a little bit, one gets the feeling they were just a little bit rushed. Like they don't really feel polished in some aspects. But uh, anyway. All right, so let's see. Can I get more fours? Oh, those are not fours. I want fours. There we go. Four fours, not bad. So basically, after you get, um, after you finish your rolls, or, or if you don't have to roll all three times if you don't want to, but after you basically decide, uh, you know, what dice you want to keep, then you have to pick here what how you want to score them. So I'll go ahead and claim fours. And each of these, the trick is each of these can only be done once. So like I could say four of a kind as well. Maybe it's worth actually saying four of a kind. The disadvantage to doing that now is I might later get a four of a kind with fives or sixes, which would be worth more points. But, you know, it's kind of the gamble you take because if, if I hope for that later, then I might not get a four of a kind at all. And then I'd get zero points on four of a kind. So let's let's go and actually let's take advantage of four of a kind now while it's here. So I click twice and there we go. So now I have, I got 21 points from that. Nice. All right, so Laura's gonna roll and she's gonna decide what to do with her dice. She gets a small straight, which means a straight with four of the dice instead of all five of them. So she had a straight of two, three, four, five. 
and a large straight would be, you know, again, a straight across all five of the dice. So, okay, fair enough. All right, so Laura's in the lead, but that's okay. We can still catch up to her. So I could actually claim a full house right now. Why don't I do that just before, before I lose this full house? Again, the thing is, you get more points if you have higher valued dice. So, like, I think I'd get more points if I had a full house with, like, three sixes and two fives. That would be, like, the best full house. But I can claim a full house with this anyway. Might as well. What a great roll for you. I mean, yeah, it's only worth nine points, actually. I would have I would have gotten more points if I'd held out for a better full house. But, oh, well, whatever. All right. Um, twos. All right, yeah, she, so she had only two twos, but she didn't really have anything else good that she could score with this. I mean, she could have claimed a small straight, but she already did the small straight, and you can't do, the point is you can't do one of these more than once. So, yeah, so she just said, okay, I have two twos, so she, she got four points for that, which is not much. All right, let's see. So we're in the lead, actually. So what are we going to do here? I could, let's see. I have two twos and two threes. Do I, which one do I want to grab? Do I, blah, 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 blah. I don't know. Oh, I'll do threes. What the heck? Why not? All right. I got a third three. And let's see. Can I roll again? Get another three? No. Okay. So I'll just have to claim threes. Nine points. Not, you know, not great, but uh, oh well. Okay. And she took sixes. So she got 12 points because she had two sixes, you know, which is eh, it's not great. But, uh, all right, so let's see. So I have two, I guess I'll do twos since I already have two twos. So let's see now, can I get more twos? Oh, I, I already did a full house. And I already did threes, so those aren't really much use to me. Oh, the threes are not of much use to me. That almost rhymes, but not quite. All right, let's try again. Mm, three twos, okay, it's not great, but oh well. Not every roll is a, is a big winner. Full house. Okay, so she got a full house as well. Okay, fine. Good for her. Fair enough. Her full house was worth worth more than mine, but that's okay. All right, so what are we doing here? So I can't do threes anymore. I almost... Let's see. I have three, four, and five. Let's try for a straight. I'll try... I'll hope for a straight. So let's see. Uh, okay, so I have two, three, four, and five. So I have a small straight. I'm going to roll one more time. Maybe I'll get a large straight if I'm lucky. No, uh, it's just a small straight. Okay, that's fine. I'll claim a small straight. There we go. All right, what's Laura going to do now? Okay, four of a kind. But her four of a kind is with one, so it actually wasn't worth very much. So that's... I'm not too sussed about it. I think we still have a chance here. Uh, let's see. So I've already done twos and threes. I could do fours, or I could do... Dare I try for a large straight? That's a big gamble because... Eh, let's try it. Let's let's take a risk. Let's let's be risky. Uh, it's not going to work. I don't think it's going to work unless on the next roll I just happen to get like a 1 and a 5 or a 5 and a 6, but that would be super, super lucky. And I have three twos, but I can't do twos again because I've already done it. So actually, I don't really have much good way of salvaging this. I'll give these away and hope that I get a couple of fours and maybe be able to... Okay, I got two fours, so I can say... Yeah, okay, I can say four. It's not, not great. That's not a great fours, but uh, oh well. The fours was not with me. Okay, Laura got three fours. Uh, okay, fair enough. All right, we're actually still in the lead, so it's not too bad, but uh, let's see. Okay, so this is actually looking all right. So I have one, two, three, and five. So I could roll a couple of times and really hope I get a four. Do I have much alternative? I mean, I could go for fives. Uh, let's see what happens. Let's take a risk. All right, that's not going to help me. Come on, give me a four. Oh, I got a four. Oh, that was lucky. I think because I'm playing on beginner difficulty level, the game is, I have a little more luck. Like it actually influences the game's luck and gives you a little more uh, slightly luckier dice rolls. So, okay, large straight. That is a large straight. All right, very nice. All right, so she got three threes. That's fine. All right, what are we down to? So I can do fives. Actually, let's do fives because I haven't done fives yet. Let's do the fives. Uh, that doesn't really help me much. Okay, three fives. Yeah, yeah, it's okay. That's yeah, okay. I can live with that. 
we got okay oh yeah choice basically means uh it's it's a free-for-all so she could have done four of a kind but she already had it she could have done sixes but she already had it she could have done fives but she, i guess she didn't want to do fives with just one five so you can at any point in time with any rule you can just say choice which basically means you just get that number of points so four times six is 24 plus five is 29 so she got 29 points for that so if you get like a lot of high numbered dice you know with really high numbers on them which don't add up to any of these here like they don't make a straight or a full house or anything you can just say choice and then get the points for it but again you can you can only do that once so she did it once so she won't be able to do it again um and like i could do it here as well so like i got two sixes so let's try for some nice sixes uh i want sixes i wanted orange so i could now say that's my sixes or i could say that's i could claim it as choice and then hope that i get more sixes later um, <laughs> which one? Do, uh, I'll I'll say that's my sixes. I got two sixes. That's fine. Let's hope that I get a a, a high rolling dice roll later. Oh, she couldn't get anything. Poor Laura. She she made kind of a frowny face because uh, she she didn't have any of these. She doesn't have any fives, she doesn't have any ones, she doesn't have a straight, and she doesn't have a, a yacht. A yacht, or a yahtzee, is when you get all five dice the same. So like five of a kind. Which happens in this game more often than it, than it statistically should, in my opinion. It happens quite a lot in this game. I think that the game kind of plays with, uh, with probability a little bit. All right, what are we doing here? Do we want to do, uh, I guess, I can try for ones. This is not great, because I need, I need a, well, okay, actually, it's not bad. Uh, if if okay i'm going to roll one more time and okay i was hoping for a one if i if i'd gotten a one i would have had a yacht and that's worth 50 points but this will have to be the ones so it's just four points which is not not great but i mean you can't do much with ones in any case so. okay so she did her fives okay fair enough so she has 128 points what do we have we have oh we're actually well ahead it's not bad Okay, um, so let's see. Let's hold on to high numbered dice. I'll, I'll keep the five and the four and hope that I get some really high rollers here. Okay, another five. All right, come on, give me something big. That's eh, not very big, but okay. I'll say that's my choice. So there we go. So I got 19 points where we have here. So we're pretty much done. And unless you get a yacht, which is fairly unlikely at this point. And Laura also needs either a yacht or a large straight, which she's probably not going to get. Yeah, she threw away her yacht because you have to you have to pick one of these so even if you can't do any of these you have to pick one of these and basically then you just throw it away and get zero for that so she had to throw away her yacht because she didn't want to lose her chance to get a large straight so that's it she won't be able to get a yacht anymore so i think we've pretty well got this i mean we can try i can try for a yacht like i can try for five of a kind let's see can i get five ones unlikely but let's see i got four ones but i can't I can't do anything with it, so I'll have to. I'll have to just click on yacht, and it gets scored as zero. And see, Laura kind of laughs at us because she says, "Oh, you got zero points." She's a, she's a smug little snooty uh, Laura Bow detective sometimes. But uh, I think we're gonna win this one. I think our chances are looking good. Yeah, there we go. So yeah, we actually won. All right. Not too bad. So that is how you play uh, yacht or Yahtzee. Yeah, see, are you going to review this on zero punctuation now? Um, all right, so that was yacht, yacht or yacht, see, and uh, the other one obviously is dominoes. And I mean, you know, it's it's it's. Come on, where does there we go? Domino. I mean, it's it's dominoes. You know, it's uh, you get to select seven dominoes, which is I guess fairly random because you can't see them. So Laura plays first. Okay, that's Laura's domino, and then I need to put like one that met. I need to put in one that matches it. And again, I need to click with the middle of the mouse, kind of. So, okay, five there. Sure, why not? Six. What do I have with a six? Uh, sure, I'll put this one down. Why not? Um, two. Uh, sure, can I do like a... There we go. A lot of blank dominoes there. Uh, no, not that one. Let's get this one. I'm not good at dominoes. If it's not apparent, can I, I don't think I can do, yeah, I can, um, so what do you do when you can't, um, do you throw away, hold on, 
Oh, oh, I see. Oh, you have to draw a domino. Okay, the bone here just to, is to draw a domino. Like in, okay, I get it. So you just have to draw dominoes if you can't. All right, let's see. No, I didn't want that one. I wanted this one. All right, let's see now. Um, all right. Uh, I think Laura's beating me quite handily at, uh, at dominoes. All right, do we go on? I guess we go on. Let's see. Oh wait, was that the whole was that the whole game? Oh no, okay, you shuffle. There we go. You click on shuffle and it shuffles. All right. I'm not good at dominoes. I don't really know. Oh, I get to play first. That's nice. All right, I'll play the six and the six. All right, uh, and then do I have a three or a, I have a six over here? I'll play that there. And then I have a four over here. I'll play that there. And I'll play that, but I don't know why. I don't really know what I'm doing. I mean, I have some concept of dominoes, but I'm not really good at it. Yeah, Laura's making frowny faces because she's not getting any good dominoes now. Um, all right. Let's try this. And yeah, I can't do anything. Oh. Sometimes it doesn't pause to show what people are saying. Hold on, is that? Oh, I need to. Maybe do this. Does that help? There we go. Hmm. I think that's an invalid play. Yeah, you're probably right. Good uh, detective work there, Laura. You figured out that I was trying to uh, do something that was invalid. Uh, come on. What can I... Uh, crud. Uh, all right. Here we go. Here's something I can play. All right. Uh, righty then. Let's put something there, and then there, and then there, and there. And I can't put anything there, can I? Like, you can't put this. You might want to check the rules. Yeah, what are the rules? I don't. I'm not sure that I actually know how to play this. Oh, these are the options. I didn't even check the options. All right, I don't know. I, I don't know what I'm doing. Oh, I cannot draw. Oh, I have a valid play. Oh, oh, right, the two. Of course, the two can go up here. Hey, there we go. I won this hand. I, uh, I, I won with six points after Laura got twelve points in the previous one. All right. Well, anyway, that's 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 that. That's um, parlor games with Laura Bow. So again, this was not based on something from previous uh, Sierra Adventures. This was something obviously specially made for this uh, for this collection. But, uh, you know, it's, it's kind of nice. This is actually kind of fun. Like, I actually, I actually played uh, Yahtzee a few times against uh, Laura, and, you know, it's, it's kind of fun. Like, I'd I had actually never played Yahtzee before. So this was kind of how I got into it and realized, oh, it's, it's actually kind of a cool game. It's, again, it's like poker except with dice. All right, so that's uh, that's that. So uh, we've got a couple more Crazy Nicks picks left. Uh, let's go ahead and let's see. There's one that's called Leisure Suit Larry's Casino. Now, this one is a little bit confusing. There is a much larger full-fledged game called Leisure Suit Larry's Casino. Uh, it's, it's you know, it's a big game. It was released on a CD-ROM. Uh, you know, it's kind of like a multimedia experience, and it has a lot more games than, than this has. This is just something very similar, uh, not similar, uh, very <laughs> simple. This is just, um, this is just the casino games from, uh, I think, from the VJ remake of the first Leisure Suit Larry game. So you have, uh, so you start off with a hundred bucks, and you have a slot machine, blackjack, and poker, and you, you can read the the rules on the games. It'll tell you about the different games. Um, you know, here are the credits. Da -da 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 -da. Yeah, so it mentions Leaders at Larry 5, but I, I feel like these are actually from, yeah, like I said, I think these are from the VJ remake of, of Leaders at Larry 1. Was, was there a game like this in Leaders at Larry 5? I don't even remember. I don't remember Leaders at Larry 5 very well, unfortunately. I I don't know why. I I remember certain parts of that game very well, but other parts not as well. Kind of unfortunate. But anyway, uh, so let's go, just go ahead and play. So like I said, you start off with uh, 100 bucks. So you can see here, this is how much you have, and this is how much you bet. So you can bet more... We can bet less. Uh, look at the odds. All right, that's your payoff. And there are no options. I mean, it's basically just just this. So play. 
Bar. Bar. Bell. Okay, I think I lost. I didn't get anything. All right. So yeah, this this is um, you know, there's not much to it. I mean, it's not. It doesn't really have much to do with Leaders of Larry, other than that it is the games that were originally in you know a couple of Leaders of Larry games, and you know the, the fact that the Leaders of Larry theme song is playing like there's a remix of the, of the theme song playing in the background. It's kind of cool, and you can see from the icon, like from this hand icon that I have, and from the eye icon as well. Uh, you, oh, yeah, like, oh, it even tells you about all the different stuff. Um, so, I mean, again, you know, it's, it's based on the Sierra SCI engine that was used in the Larry games, but there's not much to do with, uh, with Leaders of Larry. Like, it's not like you have Leaders of Larry here commenting and saying, uh, you know, giving color commentary as you play like it's it's literally just casino games so if you like this kind of thing you know it's it's kind of fun but i, I don't think these are really like i wouldn't say these are necessarily the best casino games i keep getting bars and bells i don't know why i think it's just is that just a coincidence or is the oh there we go now i'm getting something different yeah i'm not doing very well oh, there we go i got a little Got a little bit back because of the two cherries. Um, but I mean, yeah, it's it's a slot machine. There's not much to it. Oh, I got I got a little bit more, but I'm still I'm still uh, I have a negative loss because I started with 100 bucks. So, okay, so I'll cash out and uh, yeah, so we pocket our 90 bucks, and it will actually keep track of your money across these games. So, like, if I go into blackjack now, I will still have 90 bucks. So it actually kind of keeps track of that. And there's like a little mechanism where if you run out of money, you can take a loan. It's like you can actually take a loan out if you if you're if you go broke. And then you have to pay the loan back if you get enough money to pay it back. But if you if you lose all the money from the loan, then the game just ends. You can take out several loans. I think you can take out like nine or ten loans actually, and they're each worth a hundred bucks. But if you take out all the loans and you still just lose all the money, then the game just ends and says, "Sorry, you're totally, totally broke, and you can't get any more credits." So that's it. All right, let's play blackjack. You can change your bet as well. Like I can, I can bet. I don't know, I'll start with, I'll start with ten bucks. Yeah, the minimum bet is ten bucks. Okay, that's fine. And you can look at the. Uh, let's see, can I get instructions here or? Right, oh, I okay. If you click on odds, here we go. Here it gives you house rules. So yeah, bets must be multiple of two dollars. Dealer hits on 16, must stand on 17 unless he has an ace. Black to play 3 to 2 odds, when he's 6 okay. Insurance bets forever, the dealer shows an ace. May split a pair, double insurance, if only two cards, double. Okay, 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 fine. All right, let's go ahead and just, okay. I have a 20, I'm gonna stand on that, definitely. Oh, hey, nice, I won 10 bucks, all right. Oh, hey, I have blackjack, all right, that was lucky. That doesn't happen very often, but okay, fair enough. Do I want insurance, because he because the dealer pulled an ace? Uh... Do I want insurance? Nah. Uh, I have 13. Do I, yeah, hit me. Oh, come on. I busted. All right, all right. I keep clicking on, on like, here uh, to clear away the message, and then it says click on a button instead of where you click because you, can't, you don't actually need to click to clear the message. You can just click on deal to deal again. All right, I have 12. I definitely want to hit. Oh, come on. Seriously? I keep getting these tens. When, okay, all right. 13. Uh, hit me. Three times in a row. Are you kidding me? Three times in a row. Like I, I just suddenly get it, like a ten after. Oh my goodness. Okay. All right. Okay. Now I have ten. Now I can't bust if I hit. Okay. Fifteen. Do I want to? You normally wouldn't stand with fifteen, but I mean, I just feel like if I hit again, I'm probably gonna bust. Um. Yes, I did. Again, I got a ten. I don't think I could have won. I think if I had just if I had stood, then I, the dealer would have beat me anyhow. So I was. It's kind of like a. It was one of those situations where you're screwed either way. If you hit or stand, there's there's really no way out of it. All right, come on. Okay, twenty. This is good. I'll stand. And the dealer still won. What does he have? Oh, he he has twenty one. He had, I had twenty, and then he, and then this guy gets twenty one. Come on, that is not fair. Well, I mean it's. That's how the game works, but okay, 14, I'll hit. Okay, I have 17, right? That's not great, but the dealer would stand on 17, so I'll do the same. Oh, the dealer busted. Okay, it worked out. I won 10 bucks. All right. 
just for variety's sake, let's go all in. I'll, I'll toss in all my 75 bucks. Oh, bets have to be at a, mul a multiple of two, so... Okay, well, it's about 74 instead of 75. All right, I have 10, definitely want to hit. Okay, I have 19, I'll stand. Oh, hey! I won that money. Okay. I was not expecting to win for some reason. <laughs> I just want to show what happens if you lose all your money, so I'll just go ahead and deal again. I'll just keep hitting until I bust. All right, so there we go. You have only one dollar left. You need a minimum of 10 balls to play this machine. Sound like it's, sounds like it's time for a loan. So yeah, so I can click loan here and... Um, do you wish to get a loan for more money? This requires you to pay, pay it back later. Sure. So yeah, you can uh, you can have up to 10 loans and uh, yeah, so they'll loan you 100 bucks. I have 101 Larry dollars. Okay, so I can play either of these again, but I'll, let's do poker. Let's do poker and see what... Uh, so yeah, I mean, it's just, it's really just basic video poker. So I can bet, like, let's bet, oh, let's, bet let's bet 10 bucks. All right, what do we have here? Um, I'm not good at poker, by the way. I mean, I'll just keep the king and see what happens. Yeah, I lost. Big surprise. Try again. I'll keep the queen. I mean, like... Because, you know, the nines don't count as a pair unless I have another pair. To have one pair, you need jacks or better. So I need another queen or another nine to, to win this. Yeah, it, it didn't work out. I don't know. I probably... Okay. Okay, now I'm guaranteed to get to at least get my money back. I'm guaranteed to at least break even on this hand. Let's see what happens. Yeah, I broke even. And yeah, you can cash out and take your money and... That's it. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah, that's... Uh, that's it, basically. It's, you know, it's casino games. I mean, they're not bad, but it's just like they're not... Uh, not anything special. Like, I wouldn't necessarily recommend them. Uh, I mean, they're, they're kind of fun. You know, fun for a few minutes. Like, I played this for a few minutes, but it's not something that I'd really play for a long period of time. Again, I don't know how popular these were. Like, did, it, did anybody actually buy these? I think these were only selling for, like... I think like five bucks each, which, you know, back then a full length Sierra adventure game would have cost like 50 bucks. You know, if you, if you bought King's Quest 5 or Leisure Larry 5 or Space Quest 4 or 5 back in the day or something like that, you know, it, it would run you like $50. So I guess five bucks for a game like this for a collection of little mini games like this wasn't too bad. But um, yeah, I don't know. Anyway. All right, so last one. Uh, speaking of Space Quest, it is uh, Roger Wilco's game collection. So let's go ahead and run this. And you don't hear any music this time because the music here is um, the opening theme music to Space Quest IV. This was right around the time that Space Quest IV came out, I guess. So, you know, this is the that scene of Roger in the, in the introduction to Space Quest IV. Uh, so let's see, let's go ahead and take a look at the games here so what kind of so let's look at game help for miss miss astro chicken so um yeah these games are actually these games are kind of cool they're kind of um yeah monolith okay this game is just silly this this game is kind of this this game is more like it's kind of like an anti-game and then sand skimmer i mean it's yeah it's a it's a very simple game um all right let's go ahead and play oh here hold on let's look at the credits Let's see. Yeah, you know what? I think all of these games are from... Uh, oh, wait, no. What, the, the Sand Skimmer is from uh, the VJ remake of Space Quest 1. What I find odd is they didn't include the, the slot machine from Space Quest 1, because that was definitely uh, a mini game uh, which, you know, would have would have fit in here. But they, they, for some reason, they didn't include that here. But they included the Sand Skimmer, which to me is kind of like... Uh, Kind of like a throwaway. It's kind of like, I mean, it's not bad, but it's just, it's so, it, it's over so quickly. Anyway, okay. Um, all right. So, yeah, more credits, more credits. That's a lot of credits. Golly gosh, that's a lot of credits. Wow. I was not expecting that many credits. All right, and here's stuff about Sierra. So, yeah, this is telling you about um, Space Quest. So you'll blast off with Roger Wilco. All right. Okay, let's play Ms. Astro Chicken. Flight of the Pullet. Now, all right. Oh, oh, it starts automatically. Oh. Um, now, this game is using the ad lib sound, which is why the gunshots don't really sound like gunshots. In Space Quest IV, you can use Sound Blaster sound, and, um, and the gunshots really sound like digitized sound effects and not just, you know, this sort of ad lib FM synthesis. 
but there's no sound blaster support on these crazy nick picks so it's just it's just ad lib so actually standard they come standard configured for the pc speaker but if you edit the resource.cfg file you can put in uh i think adl uh, or something is, is the file name, and then you can configure them for ad lib sound manually, which is what I did. That's why you're hearing ad lib sound instead of the PC speaker. Uh, so this is Ms. Astro Chicken. The reason why I flew into that chain link fence, into that machine, did it say, is because uh, it, it actually protects you from these flying squirrels. So these flying squirrels will kill you in one hit if they touch you, but not if you're. Uh, whoops. Didn't mean to release an egg. Uh, but the flying squirrels will not kill you if you um, are stuck in a in a fence. So the fence gives you protection against squirrels for three hits, if I remember right. So I can I can take three hits from a squirrel from a flying squirrel and survive them, and then the fence disappears, and then uh, then I have to get another fence, or else just not get hit by the by the flying squirrels. So. Um, so yeah, so the fence is like a good uh, sort of insurance or defense mechanism against the squirrels, because they do tend to come up fairly suddenly like that. Um, so this is basically the whole game. The, ga the goal here is to get to 250 points. You win at 250 points, and you have three lives, and if you die three times before reaching the end, then that's it. That's, it's, whoa, 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 whoa. Always have to be careful, because you need to go down to get the corn, but if you, uh... You know, if you fly into a hazard like that, then obviously you'll die, which is not not what you want to do. Alright, so this is going not too badly. I mean, I died once, but that's... Uh, uh, I... We're still going here. We're still... Uh, flying the... The Ms. Astro Chicken. Oh. Always got to dodge up for those squirrels, because if you dodge down, there might be a dog waiting for you underneath or something else like that. You don't want to don't want to get caught by the dog. He is not a good boy. Not in this game. I don't know why... Well, I think that squirrel hit me, but that's okay. You get points if the squirrels hit you when you're wearing a fence, but I try to avoid it because I, I like the fence to stay... Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Got to dodge that windmill. Uh, because I like to keep the fence for protection's sake, but you do get some points if a squirrel hits you while you're wearing a fence. I say wearing a fence, I mean while you're stuck in a fence, whatever you want to call it. Oh, that, that shotgun shot hit me. I might not win this one. I used to be better at this game, but that was many years ago. I haven't played, I actually haven't played this for a while. I practiced a little bit for this video. But it's been several years since I've actually played this, so I'm kind of rusty. Um, if you've played Space Quest 3, you probably remember the predecessor to this was, you know, Astro Chicken. Uh, and I'm surprised also that that wasn't included in this collection, but I guess because it was an older SCI game, like it wasn't made using the VGA point-and-click SCI engine, it was made using the, the older text-based sort of uh, EGA SCI engine. I guess it would have been difficult to include it in this collection because this is based on the newer version of SCI. So, um, I guess it's understandable. It's kind of unfortunate, but uh, it's understandable. There is actually, um, I don't know where you could get them now. I don't know if they're available on some website, but I remember on the Sierra BBS, because I actually dialed into it. Sierra had like a telephone dial-in BBS years ago and I actually called into it. And from there I got uh, freeware standalone versions of both this game and the original Astro Chicken. So there is a freeware, a freeware standalone version of this game and of Astro Chicken. You can probably find them somewhere online. And, you know, Astro Chicken is, um, yeah, it's not a very good game. It's, it's like, it's good for a few minutes. But, I mean, this game is better than the original Astro Chicken. It's, it's totally different. Like, Astro, Astro Chicken is nothing like this. Astro Chicken is just landing on a landing pad. Like, that's the whole game. You just have to land your chicken. And this has a lot more gameplay to it, because you have all these obstacles, you have to, you know, bomb these things with eggs, you have to c collect the corn so you can make more eggs, get stuck in fences, things like that. I mean, you know, there's, there's a lot more to this than there was in Astro Chicken, so this is definitely the better game. You can, if you have a dog and a hunter lying next or standing next to each other like that, you can hit them both with one egg. You have to be very precise, but I've done it. You can actually get like a double hit on both of them with one egg. It is possible to do. I, I almost had it there, I think, but not quite. 
All right, we're almost there. I'm almost at 250 points. I might win this one. Oh, come on. Oh, that was close. That was close. Come on, come on, we're so close. Come on, we're so close now. Oh man, two points. Okay, did we get it? I think we got it. There we go. There we go. And you get... Uh, Bakar! Yeah, and I had five eggs, so at the end, you, you get some bonus points, however many eggs you have, times five points. Congratulations in achieving the coveted rank of Corn Weezer, you have won the Pulitzer Prize. So yeah, that was Ms. Astro Chicken. Um, let's move on. So yeah, Monolith Burger. Boy, this this was just upsetting. I remember this. This is, this is so easy, a human could probably do it. Burger comes out of the oven, drop on your lettuce, your pickles, squeeze on your mayo, squirt on your mustard, on goes your ketchup, top it off with your sesame seed bun. You make it my way, and if you mess up enough times, you're out of here. Got it? Now get to work. So yeah, the game is literally just this. You just put the stuff on the burger. Put on the lettuce, you put on the pickle, your three condiments here, and then you put on the bun. And these things can actually go on in any order. I find it most convenient just to put them in... in in left to right order because that's how the burger moves so you don't have to move the mouse as far for that uh, but you can put them on in any order the only thing that has to go last is the bun the bun has to go last but everything else can go in whatever order you f you want but i mean obviously it's easiest just to do it like this um and this is pretty manageable you get one dollar pay for each burger that you make Th this is pretty manageable right now but it gets a lot faster like every few burgers the, the speed increases and I think by the time it gets to around, by the time you get around 30 bucks, if you actually successfully do around 30 burgers, it's pretty much impossible to keep up at that point. It gets steadily harder and then it's just, yeah, it just becomes impossible. Uh, so I think it's already sped up a little bit. You can tell by the music. I haven't actually, I'm, I'm talking over the music so I couldn't quite tell, but I think it's already sped up just a little bit. But this is still manageable. Like it's still definitely doable, but if you, you know what, I'm just going to quit. I mean, this is the whole, you've seen the whole game. I mean, it's pretty tedious. Like this game, I don't know, man. It's, it's, it's not really fun. Like it's kind of like a gag game or something. It's like, yeah, okay. Anyway, okay, let's do the last one. Sand Skimmer. So this is from Space Quest 1. Uh, so I'll play on Novice. On Expert setting, all the rocks are one hit kills. But here on this one, you can survive, I think, five hits with a rock, because you can see, like, you can see the damage meter. Let's see, I've already hit two rocks. So, yeah, you can survive um, up to five hits uh, on the beginner setting. I like this music. I always liked this music. I always thought this was pretty cool music. I mean, it's very simple music, but it's just kind of like, this is one of those little, little tunes that sometimes I find myself idly just sort of humming to myself. That was pretty intense. You managed to hit three rocks along the way. And that's it. That's uh, that's the game. Let's play it again on uh, intermediate. And so you see the difference is some of the rocks are big rocks. Those big and tall rocks are, are one hit kills. But um, the other rocks function normally. Like they'll, they'll just add to your damage meter. Going too badly thus far. Uh oh. Ooh, that was close. Sometimes it's hard to tell which way the rocks are going to go. Congratulations, you made it through without a scratch. All right. All right. And just one more time, let's play on uh, expert. So, yeah, here you have to be perfect. Here you have to avoid every rock. You can't get hit even once because if you get hit once, that's it. It's game over. That was close. Sometimes they send a rock right for your position, and sometimes the the rocks are just way off. All right, so yeah, I mean the the only difference in the difficulty settings is the the ratio of small rocks to large rocks, I guess. Hey, made it through without a scratch. That's not bad. All right, that's it. So that's uh, that's the last game from Roger Rilko's Spaced Out Game Pack, and. 
that's it. This has been Crazy Nick's Picks. I guess I don't have much more to say. The games kind of speak for themselves. You know, they're they're kind of fun. I mean, 